वेलकम एवरीबडी टू दी जावा ट्रेनिंग कोर्स सो वी हैव बीन वर्किंग विद मल्टीपल डेटा मेंबर्स इन क्लास एंड डिफरेंट क्लासेस बट वी आल्सो नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ मेमोरी इज बीइंग मैनेज्ड सो इन दिस सेशन वी विल सी हाउ मेमोरी इज मैनेज्ड व्हेन वी आर वर्किंग विद जावा ओके नाउ इफ वी कंसीडर द स्टाफ मेंबर एज द क्लास एंड वी विल सी हाउ मेमोरी गेट्स एलोकेटेड हियर ओके सो for example i am creating multiple objects of this same class right so for example i created object 1 2 3 and so far some n number of uh, staff members now for the first object when it is created it creates a separate memory and assigns values for example so for example i am giving a name i am giving an age i am giving the gender so a space is allocated in the memory and values are inserted in those variables okay or the memory locations now what happens if i create another object right okay so i can't give the same memory space because if i give the same memory space what will happen the values will override the previous ones so that is why java will create a separate space for the new object and you will have the memory allocated separately for it so that two objects can hold different set of values at at one instance of time right so that is how a memory allocation is done in java okay so we have seen how a regular data member uh, is treated with respect to memory allocation now we will look at uh, variables like static so in order to understand how a static variable uh, works i am introducing a new variable called count okay so if you see here uh, i have created a count variable here so unlike regular data members uh, for the static data members the memory is allocated one time when the uh, class is created okay and it will also have the default value assigned to it now what is the difference now in regular data members and static data members right so what happens is whenever a static data member has been given in a class the memory is allocated one time with respect to class that is even if multiple objects are created out of the same class the count will not have additional memory for each object okay so the class itself will hold the memory for the static and because of this feature we need not even create objects if we want to access the static members because the memory is allocated when the uh, class is created at the run time itself okay now we will see an example as how we will use this static member in our code so here is our uh, staff member class where we already have written some code you all seen this now what i will do i will add the count which is static count okay so i have declared a count as a static integer for staff member now what i will do is i will try to access this without even creating an object or maybe what i'm saying is i will not access using an object i will directly use the class name and then i will try to access and see if it throws any error okay this is all existing code okay so what i did i have written a, a small statement uh, and i tried to access the uh, data member which is declared as static using the class name itself the whole reason what i am trying to say here is we can even access a static member without even creating an object so i am calling on top of a class name if you want you could actually call using the object also now let us run and see if we are able, if we are getting any uh, error or you know are we getting any desired output let's see if you see here it says count of staff members is zero okay this is great so which means even if i am not calling with the object name i am still be able to access the count now let me see if i can access using any object i'm just clearing the console and now we will run the code and see okay even now you are able to access the member and we got the value 
which means irrespective of whether we create an object or not create an object we will be able to access the members which are declared as static okay so now how do we use this static keyword and static data members now let us understand a particular scenario here for example i want to maintain a counter variable which will basically have the count of number of staff members available okay so now if i have to increase the count it should be common for all the objects right it can't be a specific to each object so that is why we will use static so now let us see how we can utilize this static data member and find out the total number of uh, staff members that are being created for that you may have to uh, make a little modification to the code so i am doing it here so in java there are some uh, operators called uh, increment operators like double plus okay we can even say double minus so what does this mean is this is same as count equal to count plus 1 okay so now what are we trying to do here let me explain you so what is this staff member is a constructor this is with empty parameters and this is with a single parameter so what is happening here whenever we create an object one of these constructors will be called based on what kind of uh, constructor you are calling right for example if you see here we are using both the kinds of constructors here to create an object now so now if you see here we have created three different staff members so ideally the total staff member count should be 3 which means the constructor will be called three times minimum right now whenever a constructor is called we can basically see that we have added a code to increment the count variable but this count variable is common across the class it is not specific to a single object which means the value will persist in this variable and it will keep on increment okay let us now execute and see if it is working or not okay if you see here it shows count of staff members is 3 now in the earlier sessions uh, i have told that you don't have to write anything extra in our constructors when our parent class has some constructor definitions right but this is the beauty right we are having the constructor we are calling the parent constructor and we are also able to add some additional functionality which is specific to staff member so if you remember in one of the videos i was telling that when we are going for sub class and super class we can inherit the functionality and also enhance it with respect to that particular class and so that multiple sub classes can have different kinds of functionality right so how will you do that by adding some additional code to your constructors similarly it is not just for constructors even if you have something for a method we can do that let us see one example here so here what do we have we have methods like talk walk sleep now let me add the same code in staff member okay see there is no error even though this particular method is available in person i am still be able to redeclare it and redefine it so what i will do here i will change this particular uh, print statement and see so what did we do here we have taken the method which is given in our super class and we have pasted here and i have modified the functionality that is whatever code is available inside the talk method now let us see we have we have already called talk right now let us uh, run this program and see what will happen so earlier it was printing called method talk which is from person right called method talk now because we have changed it to something else let us see if it is printing call method talk or maybe name is speaking as a class when i say name it will be the value of that particular object the name so here if you see it prints was is speaking in a class right so it did not print whatever is available in the parent class so this type of 
overriding the functionality which is present in the super class is called function overriding when we have similar kind of methods with different input parameters it is called method overloading or a constructor overloading but if you are overriding a particular method from the super class then it is called method overriding now sometimes what happens is i still want to uh, have the functionality which is present in the super class so what will i do i will say super dot talk so what will happen now whenever we call the talk method from staff member it will call the talk method of the parent class the super class and also extend some functionality so let us now execute and see so instead of printing that was is speaking in a class now there will be two statements that will be printed so if you see here it says called method talk and was is speaking in a class so we are overriding the method in the super class and extending some additional functionality okay so this is how you do function overriding i hope you got an understanding about uh, you know how uh, memory is allocated in java for different kinds of uh, data members or methods i am hoping that this uh, content is valuable i would request you to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you know uh, you will receive all the uh, videos that i am releasing on regular basis